Hello everyone and welcome to our first Maker Monday, which is themed cross-stitching. Um, I'll be showing you how to start a cross-stitch piece and we'll see how far we get with it. Um, I'm going to actually take off my video here because it kind of makes the hover cam freeze sometimes, so I want to keep that going. And I'm recording so that it can be put onto Facebook for people that weren't able to make this meeting and be edited down. So first off, I've got my fabric here. It's called Ada fabric. There's different types. You can get the kind that is waist fabric that you put on like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt that you want to cross stitch on and it gives you the area where you can work. Um, so you see how like there's these boxes, that's where you're making your X's and that waste fabric gives you that. It comes out um, with water so that it's not always there. And the fabric I'm using is an 11 count. That's just so you can see it a little better on the screen, but they have all kinds of counts. The waist fabric I had over there was an eight, so it's bigger. This is a very thin and fine one. It's a 27 count. And then I've already went ahead and put my fabric in my hoop to work with. You can work without a hoop. It's just a little easier to use a hoop. There's different types. This one was a little too small for my project, but you just put your fabric behind it and in front, and then you just might have to loosen it a little more down, and then that's what you would work in. You can move it around for ones that are bigger than the space, but I just wanted to have it all together for this project. And then I also went ahead and marked my spacing. I marked the center point, and I marked how far I'm going over to the edges. I used this water soluble pencil. Um, so it'll just come off with a little bit of water and it won't stay there forever. Plus we're going to be stitching over it so it's not going to be a big deal. But you you don't have to do that or you can even use a pencil and lightly mark in. So these are my colors that I'll be using for this project. And then I have some black that's a mess. And so I took a pattern from Whimsical Cross Stitch. It's available both on Hoopla and our Ohio Digital Library Libby app. Um, I, it has patterns in it and it has symbols in that. I just kind of transcribed it over here onto graph paper. So it was bigger and easier for me to use while filming. <laughs> so I'm actually starting with my lemon, which is this one right here, which matches up with that. You should a lot of times work with your lighter colors first, just so that it doesn't bleed onto other ones. So I'm just going to cut off a section here. I also have an embroidery needle. They're blunted on the end, so they're not as pokey but it still can hurt if you hit yourself with it. And then, so you just want to be careful. And then I'm going to take two of the strands out of my embroidery floss. And you can make your dragon any color you want or whatever you're working on. You don't have to follow the colors they suggest. They're just kind of a guideline. So I worked with what I had in my stash already because I wasn't going to be able to go to the store and buy some. And my collection is actually just an inherited collection of embroidery floss. I haven't moved my actual collection to my house yet. And then I'll just thread that through my needle. Now this is my center point and I also marked my center point on here, which is right there. I'll just mark it so I can 
easily see it. So there's going to be three and three. So from this point over, I'm just going to count one, two, and three. So this is three over from that center point. Now you're not gonna make any knots on your back. You're actually gonna like hold this down in place. And then you're gonna start working on making that X of the cross. So I'm just gonna make that first X by going down in. And then back on the other side, I'm gonna make sure that I cross over my tail of thread here and then I'll just pull it right back through. And that's gonna lock it in place. You'll wanna do a couple more over it as you're going. So we can actually do all six, and actually I went in the wrong spot. I'll fix that. So you just wanna go one down. So now, I'm going to start working on the next box. So we're gonna make six across as part of my pattern. And then on this side, you wanna make sure to lock in. That tail. And then back over here. And then we're gonna lock in that tail on this side. So on this side, you're making slants and you'll wanna make all of your crosses to the same way. So if you're doing your slants to the right first, you'll wanna do your slants to the right every time. Um, if you're doing them to the left first, you'll want to do them to the left first every time. That way everything is nice and uniform. So then on the back, it's just straight down. So we've got four, we're making our slant. And five. I'm actually not going to flip it this time. And six. So then after that, I'm going to make the other side of the X for the crosses. So I'm going to slant to the left now and just go right. That I have not untangled that. And you go all the way back to the other end. So you're essentially just making a picture with a bunch of X's. It's a lot like pixelation. So like any of those pixelated um, characters from video games, you could easily make them into a cross stitch character too. So they'll look like this on the front and on the back, it should be like that. And if you've got a little bit more tail here, you can just trim it. So I finished this row here, and now I want to move down. Now I've always been told not to move my thread 
like further than five spaces away. So this is okay. It's only like one. And so I'll just count the stitches that I need and where it needs to be. And this is actually two away. So I'm just gonna go here. We're making a line that looks like that. And remember you wanna keep all your stitches going the same way. And this row had four of the yellow. And then just pull. At this point, you want to count and make sure you're doing it right. And as you can see here, I've actually miscounted. So you can actually undo by pulling them out with your needle. Actually, I made my mistake way back. So. I have a lot to take out. I'll probably want to edit this part out and cut back to where I pick up again. And we're back to where we were. So the next row then I'll look at in my pattern. I've got two in the next row. I'm just going to go down. And Stitch, remembering that I started slanting to the right first. And then to go back, I'll slant to the left. So you can kind of start to see a shape taking place. It'll really show up more once we get more colors in here. And my next row had nothing of this color. But the row below it had two that lined up with it. So you'll basically just be looking at the chart, kind of reading what colors go where, and figuring out where everything goes. And then here's my backside. And yeah, I had a knot here that kind of made things a little ugly. You want to try to keep it as nice and clean, but if you're beginning, it's fine. Um, there are, like this one is actually a frame meant for uh, displaying, hanging it up. You can also use the traditional ones, but you can also frame it like in a picture frame, which is what I think I'm going to do with this one. I, I stole this frame off of another project. So then I'm just going to keep going with everything down here. And because it would be so far away to start at the beginning of this row, I'm actually just starting right below it. And then I'll count how many I have past it. So it looks like I have three past those two in the row above it. So one, two, 
to M3. And I'm going to work my way back. You want to make sure you're going in the correct hole, the same one that you stitched through before. Okay. So now on this side, I've got three to do, but I can't start my stitch this way because that would undo this one. So what I'm actually going to do is skip that one stitch just for now and work like this. in it once again and I'm gonna skip that one then and go down to the next one and I'm gonna split that one once again also and you know what this time I think I want to work I'm undoing those stitches. I want to work this side first. Because it's a little shorter distance so I can get my count. So I'm just using this one above it to kind of give me an idea of where it is because it's one past that length. And then I'll fill this one in. twisted as you're pulling it in and out. You don't want it too twisted because then your X's will look a little strange in some spots. So then to finish off your thread, you're just gonna weave it in through the back ones of these, and that'll lock it in without making a knot. So we're starting to see the belly of this dragon. I'm gonna switch colors just to kind of give you an idea of that. Here's my dark green. Looks like I already have a piece that's cut. And I'm just going to take two of that one. So I'm actually going to do the row right above our first yellow row of our dark green. So. You want to lock them in again. 
and I'm slanting to the right. Right hand over there. just to start working upwards. And this one is two over. And it's only one here. There's another one over here, but I'm actually gonna get to that in a moment. I'm going to make another one right above it. And I kind of made that one a little backwards because that way I can stitch right in this one right here. And I'm gonna go all the way to four across. And then to make those two. I'm just going to do one here, do this one below it, just the flashy side this part, and then I'm going to make the full X. looking like so far. Um, I can keep working upwards at this point. We've got these two stitches, which we'll have it from this way to try to keep it a little cleaner on the back. take and finish this one off because I don't think I got enough thread to finish the next row of stitches. So if I had any white in this project, I would want to start with that just because white can get very, very um, easily mixed with things. If I have any other lighter ones, I would want to do those first. I do have some lighter for the wings, which I will want to put in once I get past the body here. So once I kind of do this part, I'll start doing those. It's just so that I can count it easier. Um, but I'm just going to keep working on this and we'll cut back to when I got more finished. <laughs>
It'll go a little faster, but you have to be careful with this because your tension can get way too tight and your X's can look a little strange because of that too. So you just want to lightly pull, you want to pull too hard as you make your X's. And I've got just one more row of this yellow and I'm actually then done with this color. Finished with the yellow. Just finish it off back here. And trim. Get started with it, so I'll trim that too. And go back to the green.
So this is about an hour worth of work. Um, I'm gonna stop at this right here. And if you have any questions, anything about starting your project in cross stitch, just comment on our Facebook post and I would be happy to answer them. Um, I'll do some updates and posts on the finished project, but um, that is it for now.